This is part 21 of AngularCRAD tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to add required attribute dynamically in Angular template driven forms. Let's understand this with an example. Here is what we want to do. On our form, we have got this contact preference field. If I select email as the contact preference, then we want to make the email field required and phone number field optional. That means we want to dynamically add the required attribute on this email input field and at the same time remove it from the phone number input field. On the other hand, if I select phone as my contact preference, then we want to make the phone number field required and email field optional. Let's look at the steps required for this. This is the same create employee form that we've been working with so far in this video series. What I have done off screen is made this phone number field also required. So if we touch the field and leave it without providing a phone number, then we get the validation error message, phone number is required. And email field is also required. Along the same lines, this contact preference field is also required. Now what we want to do is, if I select email as my contact preference, then we want only the email field to be required and not the phone number. And if I select phone as my contact preference, then we want phone number to be required but not the email field. Notice our contact preference field HTML is right here. Now what we want to do is see the value that we get when we select one of the contact preference radio buttons. To do that, just below this span element which displays the validation error message, let's include this literal text which says contact preference selected value and then let's use the template reference variable. So here is our template reference variable. We are using the same name on both the radio buttons. So let's use this template reference variable and on that let's invoke the value property which is going to give us the selected radio button value. So if we select email we should get email as the value and similarly if we select phone radio button we should get phone as the value. Let's look at this in action. Notice our create employee form is automatically reloaded. When we select email as the contact preference, the value is email. And when we select phone, the value is phone. So we are going to use this expression to dynamically add or remove the required attribute. We only included this line of code right here for debugging. We don't need this anymore. So let's go ahead and delete that. Now let's take a look at our phone number field HTML. Our phone number field is just above the contact preference field. Notice on the phone number input field we have the required attribute which is what is making this field a required field. And the way we have applied it here is going to apply it always to the input field. And we don't want that. We want to conditionally add or remove the required attribute. And to do that, we are going to bind the required attribute to a Boolean expression. So let's wrap this required attribute in a pair of square brackets and bind it to this Boolean expression, contact preference dot value equals phone. So basically, if the selected contact preference radio button value is phone, then this boolean expression is going to return true. That means the required attribute will be added to the phone number input field. If we select email as the contact preference, then the value property will return email, meaning this entire boolean expression is going to return false. That means the required attribute will be removed from the phone number input field. So let's do the same thing on our email input field as well. So instead of adding the required attribute like this, let's add it conditionally and our condition here is going to check if the selected radio button value is email. Let's save our changes and then take a look at the browser. Notice now when we click within the email field and leave the field without typing anything, we don't get the required validation and the same thing happens with the phone number field as well. That's because at the moment we don't have any of the contact preference radio button selected. So this boolean expression right here is going to return false. That means the required attribute is removed from the email input field. And the same thing happens with the required attribute on the phone number input field. Now when we select email as the contact preference, notice we see the validation error. Email is required. And when I select phone, we see phone number is required. There is a small caveat here. Let's reload the form to understand it. 
Notice now when I select email or phone, we don't see the required validation errors. That's because we are checking the touched property on both the email field and the phone number field. So let's remove all the references to touched property. Let's save our changes and then take a look at the browser. Notice now we don't have to have the email or phone number fields touched first for these validation error messages to show up. That's because we have removed the touched property check. So the trick to this is to conditionally add or remove the required attribute by binding it to a Boolean expression. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Thank you for listening and have a great day.